Buenos días a todos. Hello and welcome to Phosphorology Workshop from data to vector tiles in your web and mobile apps. Uh, at the beginning, I would like to introduce the team that will guide you through this uh, workshop. My name is Tom and uh, I'm your data specialist in Mapteller team. And my main focus is the maintainer of open map tiles. I'm Peter. Bernie, I'm working as a developer at MapTailer. And I'm Adam Laza, and I'm data engineer, and I work uh, mainly with QGIS, PostGIS. So I will show you some analysis in QGIS and PostGIS in this workshop. Uh, we all work in a company called MapTailer. In MapTailer, we care about maps, we care about data. So uh, hopefully, uh, we will teach you something new today. Uh, what is this workshop about? Let's imagine that you are a, a GIS guy or GIS girl, web developer or spatial data engineer. You have some data, a shapefile, geopackage, geojson, whatever. Uh, you might want to edit your data and then display it in a map and have a really nice application on web or your phone. But at the beginning, you have just GeoJSON and you just text file. And it looks like a long way to that cool web application you dream about. Well, you're not, or we are with you to show you the way. After this workshop, you will be able to use OpenStreetMap data for your base map. You will be able to analyze your data in GeoJSON or shapefile and create vector tiles with both OSM and your data. We'll show you how to serve the tiles, how to add style to your map, and how to use this map in your web application. It sounds good, right? But then how to accomplish that? Is that easy? Well, actually it is. There are several open source projects that will help us on the way. We'll use PostGIS as a database, then we will use open map tiles as a, as a project that defines schema of the vector tiles. Uh, we will fiddle with QJS to display our data and analyze them. And we will use MapLibre and MapTile Cloud to finally get that application. Okay, what will be our use case? Let's say that I'm a bike enthusiast. I'm at Phos4G conference in Buenos Aires and I want a web app that displays cycleways in the center of Buenos Aires. So I want a map with cycleways. But because I have a really old bike, there is pretty high chance that my bike breaks down and I will need to repair it or maybe even use a, a shared bike. That's why I want to add some points of interest. I want to add points uh, with bike shops I want to add uh, bike sharing stations. Because I am super lazy, I want to know how far these points are from the nearest cycleway. Uh, there is a simple and, let's say, advanced solution. I will show you both of them. Thank you, Adam. Uh, so if you would start working on an application like that, you would probably <clears throat> start with something like uh, using your uh, base map provider uh, uh, and you would initialize the map viewer. So as you can see on this uh, sample here, uh, you would tell the map viewer to load standard predefined style. And then you would uh, probably load uh, points of interest from, for example, GeoJSON data source or any other JSON source. And then you would iterate uh, that source and create markers, put them on the map. That's kind of, you know, a very basic solution. And uh, if you would do it, you would basically get application <clears throat> like this. Standard, standard base map uh, with uh, markers, and that's it. 
this is this is typical approach which many developers take. Um, it has some drawbacks. We will talk next. Um, for example, uh, loading huge data set from JSON doesn't scale. Uh, another problem might be that uh, the base map which will use will not have the complete information you are looking for. For example, you will not see all the cycle values. So, so as we will go through this, this tutorial, um, we will show you um, a way how to do this. And uh, we will implement application which will have uh, which will have customized base map, and it will show it will it will basically load all those points of interest to uh, vector tiles, and in the end you will you will see something like this. That's all for now from me, and I will ask them to go back. Uh, back to our use case, uh, what do we have? Uh, we have uh, GeoJSON with bike shops in Buenos Aires, and we have a shapefile with bike shopping stations. Uh, these are open data from Buenos Aires uh, open data portal. Big thumbs up for Buenos Aires for open data. Uh, we want to analyze the data at the information about the distance from the cycleway. Uh, we want to have a, a map of cycleways, bike shops, and bike sharing station, and we want to display the map in our in our app, the phone, and we want to have have a pop ups so we can click on the on the bike shop icon and get a pop up with some additional attributes, some additional uh, information, for example, the distance from the cycleway. Uh, these are the steps we will show you in the workshop. Uh, first, we need to add data, OpenStreetMap, and our custom data from Open Data Portal of Buenos Aires. Uh, second, we want to modify our data. We want to do the analysis. Third, uh, we will take these data and generate vector tiles from them. And last, we will build uh, a web app. Uh, step one, uh, we'll, we will use OpenStreetMap data for a base map. You can see them on the left side, and you might find that these uh, data are incomplete. For example, uh, there are missing cycleways or, or bike shops, but uh, we have our custom data set, which is more complete and is up to date. And uh, we might also learn that cycleways data exists in OpenStreetMap database, but they are not included in the schema by default. And we will show you how you can add these data into vector tiles schema. Uh, step two, uh, we need to add um, an additional attribute to our points, which uh, doesn't exist uh, anywhere, but it's important for our use case. Uh, in our example, um, uh, we want to tell the users how close is the bike shops or rental station uh from the from the cycleway uh, we will show you how to calculate the distance between each points and the closest cycleway and we will show you how to include this information in vector tiles uh, this is something uh, peter talked about uh, while loading points in json from server and drawing them on the on the map uh, it works for small data sets but it's not scalable uh, your marker set might grow over time and uh, your users might experience a performance issues uh, as the app needs to download your JSON file, mm. parse it on the client, and render all markers. Uh, there are solutions to solve this problem, for example, clustering, but we will show you uh, how you can use the power of vector tiles. The tiling schema partition the map space and you only request data from server which are relevant for the actual map extent and scale. And since we use vector tiles, you can still access attributes and present them to the user. And our final goal, let's build the web app and mobile application, which makes use of the improvements we have just described. Uh, we will focus on the, on the web app. We will show how you can host the vector tiles you have created, how you can use it in the application, 
and how you can display its attributes. We will also show how you can use your custom map on mobile device using MapTiler mobile app. You can also reach out to MapTiler Docs site where are tutorials showing uh, how to build app with your custom map for iOS or Android. Uh, about the organization of the workshop, it will be split into four blocks. Each of us will guide you through one of the block. Uh, between the blocks, there will be a few minutes break to refresh, catch up, ask any additional questions. And we'll start with block one about data from OpenStreetMap. Uh, some useful information. Uh, we created a GitHub repo where you can find all source code, input data, analysis results. There is also a README file uh, that describes the whole process step by step. So even if you get lost or something in the README file, you can go and step by step uh, see what you should to do. Uh, we also have a FTP server where all input data, analysis results, and, and these slides. So it's on slash phosphor g uh, You have to log in as user phosphor g and password is Buenos Aires 21. During the workshop, we will use some few uh, we will use few services that requires uh, you to create an account. Uh, but don't worry, everything is free, and you need, need just a Google account. So please create an account at uh, cloud.metal.com and uh, stackblitz.com. And if you are not on, if you are not using Linux, please uh, also create an account on the cloud.google.com because we will need it. Uh, yes. Uh, mm, our main concern is about what operating system do you use? If you use Linux, uh, please install Docker and Docker Compose. Uh, there are links on the slides uh, to the docs from Docker. And if you have uh, if you have OS X or Windows, uh, please create an account on the on the Cloud Shell and uh, sign it with your Google account. And uh, as you can see on the on the, on the picture here. Uh, if you sign in, there is an option console, and it will create a small virtual machine for you, and uh, you can you can work with us. Also, we need to have uh, a QJS installed. Uh, make sure that you have version three sixteen or later. Uh, if you are installing now and you are on Linux, make sure that you install also QJS plugin grass package. Uh, and information how to how to install the QJS is uh, on the link provided here.